In today's COVID-19 update, we learned that 57 persons are hospitalized countrywide for COVID-19. Of that number, 42 are at the Infectious Diseases Hospital at Lilliendal, and one child remains in the ICU of that same hospital. We spoke with the Minister of Health, Dr. Frank Anthony, also about the rehabilitation works taking place at the dental school. And we learned that the Lenora Smart Hospital should be up and fully running by September. Minister Anthony, good morning. Thank you so much for joining us today. Good morning to you. Thank you for having me on the program. Uh, I know you visited the Chetty Jagan Dental School yesterday, and I wanted to do a quick update before we go into the COVID questions. Now, the uh, institution is on the rehabilitation right now, and I understand that they got a new uh, pharmacy as well as their plans for some other departments as well. Could you give us an update on that? Over the last year, uh, the ministry has started a program to rehabilitate different sections of the facility. So we have just completed an area where we would normally do sterilization of our instruments and um, that has just been completed and handed back to the, um, to the management of the facility. We have also completed uh, the pharmacy and in the past, persons who uh, would come to the dental school would get a prescription. If they, if they got a prescription, then they will have to take that prescription over to the Georgetown Hospital or go and buy the medicines. We are trying to change that. So we have constructed on site a pharmacy and very shortly that pharmacy would start operating. We are now putting in a pharmacist and other personnel uh, to support uh, the pharmacy, but the space has been uh, designated. Uh, we now have um, uh, supplies in there, and uh, within a week or so, we should have the personnel to operate the pharmacy. Minister Anthony said more specialized services will also be offered very soon. We recognize that persons who require some specialized type of dental work are not able to get it anywhere else. Um, in a lot of cases, it's more than just the normal dentistry that uh, people would come to the institution for, but it requires operation by a maxillofacial surgeon. Currently at the institution, we have a number of maxillofacial surgeons, but they don't have a theater uh, to operate. So in this year's budget, we had allocated $24.1 million to construct a theater for maxillofacial surgery at the dental school. We have gone out for bids. We have received those bids. We have had an evaluation. And um, the winning bid, uh, bidder would now be given a contract. So we are signing that contract during this week and construction should start by next week to create this, um, this maxillofacial theater. Can I also ask you for a quick update on the Lenora uh, Smart Hospital? Well, the Smart Hospital at Lenora is one of five that we are doing, and you would know that we have completed the Diamond uh, Smart Hospital project, and that is back in use right now. Um, the next one that uh, we will be completing shortly is the Lenora facility. Uh, this facility is undergoing a complete transformation, making it uh, more efficient in its flow. Uh, so getting from one place to another, we are trying to make it more efficient. Plus, uh, we are making it more climate resilient, meaning that we shouldn't have any flooding or anything of the sort at the facility. Uh, in addition to that, we'll be utilizing a lot of renewable energy. Uh, so there'll be solar panels. And most of the facility, the things that we use in the facility, equipment and so forth, uh, would be powered by these uh, solar panels that we're putting on. Of course, we'll have backup in case uh, it doesn't work and vice versa. Um, so a lot of work has been 
done at the facility. We are expecting the completion of this facility by the end of August. So sometime in September we will be able to reopen the facility uh, to the general public. You now for our COVID question, can I ask you for an update on the number of patients that we have at the Infectious Diseases Hospital? And I know that there are also children hospitalized. 57 persons who are currently in hospital across the country. Uh, 42 of those persons are at the Ocean View facility. And of those 42, we have 11 who are in the ICU. And of the 11 persons currently in the ICU, we have one child that is there. And in the hospital per se, we have four children, but one child uh, remains in the ICU. The three others are in the regular wards. Uh, we also have patients, two patients at West MRR Hospital. We have three patients at the Maikoni Hospital, five at the New Amsterdam and Skeldon Hospital, and two um, in Linden. Um, so as of uh, yesterday, we've had 241,010 persons uh, who would have received their first dose. This amounts to about 49.5% of our adult population. And for second dose, we have 125,464 persons. Uh, this would be approximately 25.8% of our adult population who are now fully uh, immunized. But once again, I want to appeal to people because we do have uh, first dose Sputnik and uh, we have enough to give persons who want to receive the first dose Sputnik. We also have um, second dose Sputnik, but we, have, we are starting with those um, whose vaccination for second dose would become due, meaning that we are looking at persons who would have received their first dose Sputnik in April. Um, I am very pleased with the uptake. A lot of people has come forward to get their vaccines, uh, the second dose. But we also have first dose, and we are encouraging persons who have not been vaccinated as yet to come for those first doses. Okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, I, I have to push in our today's myth buster, and bear with me. So using garlic tea or ginger tea daily can protect you from COVID-19, yes or no? I'm not sh sure what the effect of garlic would be on the virus, but again, um, the basics that we have to understand is that you have a coronavirus that is transmitted by aerosols or by droplets. And so if you are not wearing a mask um, and you are in contact with an infected person, uh, transmission can occur. And therefore, the easiest way that you can get infected is if you inhale um, these viruses from the droplets or the aerosols that are circulating. That would get into your respiratory tract and of course it would attach itself in, in the lining of your lung and, and, and start causing infection. Ginger tea, um, I don't know the mechanism for that but certainly I don't think it would have much effect. Um, we know for sure uh, the life cycle of this virus in the human body and the medications that we use is to intercept it at different points in the life cycle and to disrupt uh, the life cycle so that these virus uh, they do not multiply and the medications that we are using are able to do that and of course if the person um, develop uh, severe form of the disease, apart from interrupting that life cycle, um, the virus itself will trigger other responses in the human body that we we'll also have to mitigate. So our treatment is based on the severity of the disease, what we're seeing, um, and once we see these things manifesting itself, uh, the doctors and the clinicians at the hospital would know how to 
uh, treat appropriately. Well, that's it for today's COVID-19 update. Of course, we just spoke with the Honorable Minister of Health, Dr. Frank Anthony. Remember, for more information, you can log on to our website, dpi.gov.gy, and the Ministry of Health's website as well, health.gov.gy, and of course, our social media platforms.